Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shivang and this is a place where you can expect to find content geared towards living a life that is intentional, meaningful, and fulfilling. If you're expecting any content around hustle culture and purposeless productivity, then this ain't it. All right, so with that, let's get into it. So today's video is a little bit different from my usual videos because today we're talking about nutrition. I am by no means a nutritionist and I haven't studied dietetics or any of that sort of stuff, but I did read this 400 page tome called How Not to Die. And I learned a lot of good tips about nutrition that I wish I knew a couple years ago as I was moving into the new world, was no longer reliant on my mom's cooking and was actually just cooking and eating for myself. And I found some of this stuff to be so important and it was weird that nobody ever really told me about it. So I'm kind of sharing this in hopes that more people can get access to this information, hopefully even read the book at some point if they get a chance. Before we even get into this, though, I want to talk about how I kind of even came across this book and going towards a whole food plant-based diet. So something I've been incorporating more and more in my life is trying to be compassionate towards all beings. So everyone, people, animals, everything. And essentially, I couldn't keep up with my meat eating habit while I was also trying to be compassionate towards everybody and everything. Over the years, I'd already basically given up eating meat. I would almost never eat meat or cook meat on my own just because it was too much of a pain compared to cooking up some vegetables and curries and things like that. But the two things I was really struggling to give up was milk and eggs. And I love, love, love milk. And I also just really enjoy eggs for breakfast. But of course, milk production is just a process that's full of so much pain and torture, artificially impregnating a cow, stealing the calf, and then milking the cow until there's basically nothing left. It's just too painful and I couldn't really keep consuming milk without having those images in my mind. In fact, imagine if every time we bought like a bottle of milk, in order to open the bottle, we had to scan a QR code that would show us how the milk was made. Everything from start to finish, from artificially impregnating an animal, to stealing its baby, to then taking away its milk. Imagine having to do that every time you poured yourself a glass of milk. I could not handle it, right? So I don't want to do something that I can't bear to witness or see. And that's why I kind of stopped drinking milk and I kind of went with oat milk instead. And it's actually wonderful. I actually would choose now oat milk over milk any day. All right, well, that's really enough about milk. But in this video, what I want to share with you all are five nutrition tips to help you eat better, live better, longer, healthier lives. And I learned all of this from the book, How Not to Die. It's a 400 page book that I learned a lot from. And it was written by Dr. Michael Greger, who graduated from the Tufts University School of Medicine. Well, actually it doesn't even matter that he's a doctor because what you learn very early on in this book is that doctors in the US are actually given very little to almost no education in nutrition during the entire period of learning. In fact, Dr. Greger chose Tufts University only because it had the most amount of nutrition education among all the 19 medical schools he got into. And by most, I mean 21 hours of education in nutrition. This book is not so much so a product of his education in medicine at Tufts or any medical school, but really his own independent research. As somebody who had a lot of access and was able to read and go through a lot of scientific evidence on nutrition because of his own interest. As Dr. Greger points out, the US healthcare system runs on a fee-for-service model in which doctors get paid for the pills and procedures they prescribe, rewarding quantity over quality. We don't get reimbursed for time spent counseling our patients about the benefits of healthy eating. If doctors were instead paid for performance, there would be a financial incentive to treat the lifestyle causes of diseases. Until the model of reimbursement changes, I don't expect great changes in medical care or medical education. In other words, in terms of nutritional science, what I basically learned is that we're basically living in the Wild West. Not only do we not have great guides in terms of doctors, we also simultaneously have to deal with people who are actively trying to detract us to sell us their products. I'm talking about the meat industry, the supplements industry, fast food industry, influencers that get paid by these industries to you know, promote their products. You know the tea I'm talking about. We're constantly being sold new drugs, new supplements, new diets, all this stuff with little to no scientific backing and sometimes it can be actively harmful towards our health. So it's really up to us and it's super important for us then to kind of take our nutrition, unfortunately, into our own hands and to really learn as much as we can about it because nobody else is going to tell us or teach us. All right, and because of this, I wanted to share five key and easy to remember takeaways that I had from this book that I hope you'll find super helpful. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into the five key takeaways. 
Number one, the more of your diet is whole food plant-based, the better. By whole food, we mean unprocessed food. And by a plant-based diet, we mean a diet that does not include any animal products. But here, Dr. Gregor actually points out that you cannot let perfect become the enemy of good. A lot of people don't go ahead and adopt a plant-based diet because they're like, oh my gosh, I have to completely exclude animal products completely from my meal. I can't enjoy my grandma's favorite chicken curry or her incredible meat lasagna, or I can't enjoy my favorite pepperoni pizza ever again. It's still better if you're say 80% plant-based and 20% animal-based, or you maybe just keep those special dishes that are very close to you, say culturally or for whatever reason, are close to your heart for special occasions. But for most situations, if you focus on having a plant-based diet, the better you are because of it. A lot of people don't even adopt the plant-based diet because they're like, well, I can never eat this thing ever again. But in fact, you can enjoy the small things here and there, but just primarily consume plant-based food. And with whole food, it's really important that we're eating unprocessed food. So it's really interesting because when I started adopting sort of my more vegan diet in Toronto, I went to this vegan restaurant that really specialized in making vegan fast food and really just the most deep fried plantains and chips and fake burgers and all that messy good stuff. And I'm really happy it exists because, I mean, if you ever have a craving for that kind of greasy, messy food, you can go ahead and satisfy the desire without having to, again, buy anything that's produced from animals and, you know, industrial meat production. But at the same time, that isn't a very nutritious diet. So even though you're going plant-based and you're not eating any, you know, animal-based food, if you're just eating a lot of deep fried french fries and chugging beers, that's not really going to help you out either. So it's really important that we have a plant-based diet that has as few processed foods as possible. So when we're choosing between brown rice and white rice, let's go for brown rice. I understand that if you're eating fake meat, that fake meat is a transitional food. It's something in between as you switch into like full, say, plant-based food. It's not the end destination. Number two is always choose and eat colorful fruits and vegetables. One thing you'll hear a lot about in general nutrition, as soon as you start reading about it, is antioxidants. Everybody and their mothers talks about antioxidants without ever explaining what an antioxidant is, what oxidation is, what free radicals are. So let me explain it very quickly. Technically, a free radical is basically just an atom that has an unpaired electron and kind of goes around damaging your body. The way I think about it is, imagine a really drunk and boisterous person in a bar who's trying to leave the bar and keeps knocking over tables and spilling drinks and just being rude along the way, creating a complete mess. That's kind of how the free radical behaves in your body, in your blood vessels. It goes around smashing into things and just kind of creating a complete mess. And actually it's been found that it can actually damage your DNA and that's what kind of leads to a lot of cancers. So the reason why antioxidants are important is because they basically tranquilize this drunk person or the free radical in your blood vessels so that it doesn't cause any damage, it binds to it. Now, a lot of antioxidants actually live in color. So any foods that have more color also automatically have more antioxidants. So when you're out in the grocery store picking up vegetables, go for the reddest strawberries, the reddest tomatoes, the blackest blackberries, the bluest blueberries, the most dark green broccoli. When you're choosing between a red and a white onion, go for the red onion. Between greenish white and a red cabbage, go for the red cabbage. Red cabbage contains eight times more antioxidants than regular sort of green cabbage. And red onions have 76% more antioxidant capacity than white onions. So if you're gonna be eating the same or similar vegetable, you might as well choose the vegetable that has more color in it because it truly is better for you. Number three, don't choose supplements over whole foods that can bring you the nutrients that the supplement already contains. In fact, when you're actually buying supplements, you may actually just be simply burning your money away and this is for two reasons. Just because you pop a pill doesn't mean you're actually absorbing any of its nutrients. You could literally be excreting it away at a later date. And number two, we often think that we know what the active ingredient in some kind of vegetable or spice is, and we kind of make a supplement that's super focused on that one active ingredient, but you don't really know for sure that that's really what's causing all the benefits. When it comes to absorption, sometimes we have certain kinds of nutrients that simply our bodies cannot absorb without some other kind of substance, a compound, or something else chemical existing that can help us absorb that specific nutrient. And what often happens with whole foods, foods that actually contain the nutrient we're after, whether that's iron or 
vitamin C or calcium, they often have those other compounds too that kind of together work to let our body absorb the nutrient that we're looking for. When you just kind of buy a pill that only has that one nutrient, our body may just never be able to actually absorb it at all. That's also why sometimes people say you should eat a supplement along with an actual meal so that the kind of other compounds in the meal help to absorb the actual nutrients in the supplement. Now in terms of actually isolating active ingredients, this is pretty iffy altogether. I'll give an example of what people are doing with turmeric, something that Dr. Greger points out in How Not to Die. Basically, people keep thinking that the turmeric's main active ingredient is curcumin. And so what supplement companies have done is obviously it's a big money-making opportunity. So they find of isolated curcumin from turmeric and they sell it as supplements. But what's actually been found is that even turmeric, when you remove curcumin from it, so curcumin less turmeric, is actually just as effective, even more effective than turmeric with curcumin. And so that means that there's something else in turmeric as well that's super helpful and may even act better without the presence of curcumin at all. And so when you can, don't go for the curcumin pill. Instead, go for actual, real, powdered maybe turmeric or turmeric root. It's always better, always, to just eat the food that contains the nutrient, a food that's rich in that nutrient that you're after, than go for a supplement. Number four, avoid any added salt and sugar. And the real keyword here is added, whenever it's artificially added by somebody. So when it comes to fruits, for example, you don't have to worry too much about fructose in actual fruit, but when the fructose or sugar is added onto something that doesn't contain the sugar in the first place, then it's a problem. There are some better sweeteners than others. You know, you have honey, you have agave, and you have less processed cane sugar that's better than, say, just pure crystalline white sugar. But even those aren't particularly great nutritionally. The two sugars or sweeteners, I guess, that Dr. Greger actually points out actually do have nutritional value and so have a green light are blackstrap molasses and date sugar. So if you want sweeteners, try and go for those if they're available. With regards to salt, just cutting back as much salt as you can is good for you, period. Try spicing your food up with other things. Oregano, paprika, red chili powder, garam masala, turmeric, black pepper, thyme. I mean, you have endless options. And if something does require salt, try cutting back a bit. So if the recipe asks for one teaspoon, try doing three fourths of a teaspoon and see how it feels. The next time you do it, try doing it with half a teaspoon. What you'll actually find is that your body starts adapting to less and less salt and you actually become more sensitive to other tastes as well in the food that you probably wouldn't have been able to taste before because your taste buds were too dulled by all that added sugar and salt and everything. And number five is trying our best to implement the daily dozen. Now this seems like a big list. When I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I don't even eat this much food in a week. <laughs> but don't think of each serving as like a full plate of that stuff. Dr. Gregor and this book are not asking us to eat 12 plates of food. In fact, for example, if you eat just a simple peanut butter and banana sandwich, you kind of actually check off four of these boxes. What a serving means here is kind of a little bit different based on each item, and you can look it up um, online. A big salad can actually check off seven or 11 of these boxes. But one thing I want to kind of point out in this checklist that was particularly interesting and emphasized is there's one whole checkbox for berries and one whole checkbox for flax seeds. So we really have to bring that in to our diet every day. And flaxseed is super easy to bring in. Just kind of put some powdered flaxseed in any kind of food you're eating. It'll probably be fine. And just have a handful of berries every day. This checklist, I think, is just a good thing to keep in mind. I don't see myself like checking it off every day. That's just too much mental work but it's something to strive towards and try and get as much as I can every single day. All right, you all, those were basically the five takeaways I wanted to share from How Not to Die, a book I'm so incredibly thankful for that I, I guess came across at the age of 26 and I'm sure it helped me more and more as the years go by. I hope you got something valuable and helpful out of this video. If there's somebody you think could enjoy this video, then share this video with them. This video was a little bit different from my usual videos where you honestly talk about more, I guess, abstract and personal and societal topics. But honestly, my whole channel's ethos has always been about living a life that is thoughtful, intentional, and meaningful. And intentional eating is very much a part of it. And it just if it ends up allowing us to live our lives that much longer to be more purposeful, that's amazing. All right, so with that, if you like this content, give my video a thumbs up because that's super encouraging to me. If you like this video and you want to see more of such content, then hit the subscribe button so you know when my next video is out. And with that, I'll see you all next time.